I came to Sridhar Mayapur the first time in 1986 with a group of devotees from Switzerland. It was the centennial year, 500th anniversary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. It was also the year where I was fortunate enough to receive Harinam Diksha, first initiation, here in Sridhar Mayapur. It is very, a very eventful day. We all sat in long rows. After that event, on the same day, I remember I went around the Lotus Park distributing Back to Godhead magazines in the Bengali language, Bhagavad Darshan. They cost the two rupees each magazine. And it was very difficult to persuade the people to take the magazines. Because people are very devotionally inclined and they already know quite a bit about Bhagavad Gita and Lord Krishna's teachings. But somehow, meditating on Srila Prabhupada and on his uh, example, how he was going in Delhi on the streets to persuade people to take Back to God at magazine, I was somehow capable of distributing uh, 50 magazines on that day, and I felt very purified by this activity. I came back to Mayapur every few years with devotees for Parikrama to do pilgrimage and to attend classes and seminars. And Mayapur, from the first day when I came here, I felt this is home. This is the place where everything feels right. So my heart felt a great attraction to Mayapur right from the beginning. And eventually, by Krishna's mercy, we were allowed to render some humble service in uh, facilitating the construction of Vaishnava Academy, <clears throat> which is an educational project where we're holding Bhakti Shastri classes, different uh, Shastra classes, other different types of adult education which are taking place here. And it is also serving as an international uh, place for education and guest house for foreign devotees. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very merciful. We can feel the mood of Audharya or magnanimity. He's very generous. That Everybody has a place here in Mayapur. So we feel very fortunate and very sheltered to be allowed to take part in this wonderful movement of ISKCON that is originating uh, here from Sridhar Mayapur. This is the place where Srila Prabhupada came to visit the Samadhi of his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, just up the road. Uh, in Chaitanya Mat, before going to the West. He came here to get the blessings of his spiritual master, of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, who is eternally residing just on the other side of the Jalangi River, who had a vision, who foresaw the uh, spreading of the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Also, he had a vision of this great temple, of Vedic planetarium, this Adbhuta Mandir, which was predicted by Lord Nityananda himself. So Srila Prabhupada has made it his life's mission to see this temple uh, inaugurated and operational in full swing. And now it is the inheritance of each and every member of this movement and sympathizer to help this temple come up and to be what it was intended to be, a center of education, a center of congregational chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and the center from where this inundation, these waves of the Sankirtan movement will spread and inundate the entire world with the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Mayapur for me, is home. And home means where you have your friends. It means where you have your very private and intimate moments of contemplation and meditation on the Lord. Because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, especially in his form as Panchatattva, 
are very merciful and they're very available, they're accessible to all living entities. So I request every viewer of this, please come to Shiram Mayapur, worship Panchatattva by chanting Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Navadvip in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time was the educational center of the entire India. So in Shiram Mayapur the plan is to again revive all these different Vedic arts and teach them. This is the place where these activities are meant to happen and they're already uh, started to happen uh, in a seed-like form. So we urge you, please come and visit Shiram Mayapur. If you can, come and live in Shiram Mayapur. Spend your time here and help fulfill Srila Prabhupada's uh, vision, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's dream, Lord Nityananda's prediction of spreading Krishna consciousness all throughout the world through this Harinam Sankirtan process. Siddha Mayapur is a very historic place. It is the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has appeared here in order to enunciate the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila in the ninth chapter, the three of devotional services described. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, he was the gardener, and he has cultivated this tree of devotional service. By watering the root of the tree, all the leaves, branches, and twigs will become satisfied. In the same way also, when we give food to the mouth and to the stomach, then all the limbs and parts of the body become satisfied. When we worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu through the performance of Harinam Sankirtan, which is the Yuga Dharma, then all living entities in the universe will become pleased and satisfied. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, who invented some 500 years ago, just up the road in Yoga Pit, he ordered every man, woman and child to take up this Harinam Sankirtan, and to help him in distributing these fruits of love of Godhead, Krishna Prema, to all living entities, especially the inhabitants of Bharata Varsha. He said, Bharata Bhumi Tehoila Manusha Janma Jar, Janma Sartakya Karikara Para Upakar. This is the highest welfare work for the benefit of human society to distribute Harinam Sankirtan all throughout the world. And this Harinam Sankirtan wave is expanding from Sridham Mayapur. So this is a very historic place. It is a very vibrant and active place. It is also the world headquarters of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So we are here seeing a garden where so many plants are <clears throat> being grown by uh, the fertility of the, sa of, the, of the ground, by the water that is coming from the Ganges, and by the efforts of the devotees. In the same way, if we accept this seed of devotional service that is coming from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and we water it daily by Shravanadi Jal, by the daily hearing and chanting about Krishna and his pastimes, then a very wonderful uh, tree of devotional service can sprout in our heart, which can bring forward this Krishna Prem, this fruit of love of Godhead. Our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada was concentrating all his efforts in preaching Krishna consciousness by writing his Bhaktivedanta purports. Because he had given his life to the mission of his spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who ordered him to publish books. Wherever he was on the globe, every night he would sit down and for many hours translate Srimad Bhagavatam. The same activity was going on when he was here in Sri Mayapur. Srila Prabhupada would translate Srimad Bhagavatam and because of his full dedication and surrender to the mission of his spiritual master, the weight of the Krishna consciousness movement is being felt all over the world. Just like Dhruva Maharaj, who was standing in Madhuvan, Vrindavan, on one leg, practicing the uh, yoga asana and chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Sudevaya, the entire universe shook. And eventually, Lord Brahma uh, and Vishnu himself 
they all took notice of his activity. In the same way, Srila Prabhupada was sitting in his hut, what looked like a very remote, very isolated place. But because of the weight of his austerity and the purity of his service, the entire world noticed the import, the impact of his Bhaktivedanta purports. And the devotees are dedicating their life to serve Srila Prabhupada in studying these Bhaktivedanta purports and in distributing these transcendental literatures all throughout the world. Srila Prabhupada took great joy and pleasure in hearing the Sankirtan results from all over the world. And he said, if you continue distributing my books, I will live, I will go on living forever. So if you want to know the real meaning of Sri Mayapur, we should study Srila Prabhupada's books, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, so that we can imbibe the mood of our founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada and combine, uh, imbibe it in our own lives. For Mayapur is an eternal place, it is a dam, it is the abode of the Lord, and everything moves according to His will and desire. Some things are manifested and some things are unmanifested. Right now the temple of Vedic planetarium is coming up. We are nearing the stage of completion of the dome and it is proposed to, uh, expected to be inaugurated in 2022 with the efforts of all the devotees worldwide. Right now in Sri Mayapur there is 4,700 resident devotees out of which we have almost 500 Russians who live here and people from practically every nation of the planet. Shida Mayapur being the world headquarter, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness will serve as an educational center for the Hare Krishna movement where devotees from all over the world can come to learn and study Shastra, deity worship, kirtan, playing devotional instruments and all the other devotional arts that are there. Shri Mayapur will also more and more become a tourist attraction. Already now there are a few million pilgrims coming every year, mainly from India, some international. But in the future there will be more and more international tourism and pilgrims that are drawn to Sri Mayapur to see this temple of Vedic planetarium and to visit this unique community of devotees who are dedicating their lives to the service of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That is the unique feature of this place. The devotees will be engaged in all different occupations. It is a Vedic city. It will be a spiritual city where all the Varnas and Ashramas will be manifested and people can come and learn what does it mean to live a perfect human life in harmony with nature, with the environment, in a spiritual context. So Sri Mayapur has a very bright future. How long it will take for that to manifest, that is depending on the Lord's will, His desire, also on how we reciprocate with the Lord's desire. Personally speaking, Sri Mayapur has been very beneficial, helpful, very soothing for my own spiritual life. It is the place where I always come to recharge my batteries and to gain inspiration and strength for going out and sharing the message of Sri Krishna and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with all the people that I meet. Sri Mayapur is an amazing place that has many, many things to offer. So come all to Sri Mayapur. Experience the magic, experience the mystery for yourself and become part of that magic uh, episode, the history in making of the spreading of the Hare Krishna movement which has begun from this place and the waves, they will also converge back to this place here in Sri Mayapur. Hare Krishna.